Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about the GCD characterization theorem. Uh, this is quite simple, but uh, it's a pretty pretty neat trick. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So let's say we have A and B, which belong to the set of integers. Uh, and let's say we have D, uh, which actually belongs to the set of natural numbers. And natural because D is supposed to be the greatest common divisor of A and B. So uh, D belongs to natural. Um, and let's just assume D... Uh, goes into A and D is a divisor of B. Um, so D is a common divisor, a common divisor of A and B. Okay, um, pretty clear until now. Uh, let's su suppose there exists X and Y such that AX plus BY equals D. Suppose there exists x and y. Uh, the x and y belong to actually the set of integers. Um, and yeah, then the GCD of a and b equals d. And this is, uh, yeah, uh, how does this make sense? Um, first of all, I'm going to show you an example. Then I'm going to show you a counterexample. And then I'm going to show you the proof. So yeah, example. Let's uh, let d equal 3, a equal 6, uh, b equal 9. So d equals... Uh, some linear combination of 6 and 9. So this let this be negative 1. And let this be 1. And as you can see, uh, this is in the form of this, right? So uh, D, you know, equals 3. Um, 3 equals negative 6 plus 9, which equals 3. Yeah, which is, you know, correct. And D is the, so D is the greatest common divisor of 6 and 9. Uh, now let's have the same numbers except b equals 12. And now, obviously, the greatest common divisor isn't 3, it's 6. There actually isn't any linear combination which will give the result 3. I mean, there, there, should be, there's, there are no two numbers, no two integers that give 3, um, which is, and this is, you know, like a simple, basic example, but um, you can use this for higher numbers and uh, more complex equations. Okay, uh, I'm just going to show you the proof right now. Oops, let's see. P-R-O-O-F. God, that's spelling right. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, let C um, be a common divisor. Divisor of A and B. Um, so yeah, C is like D, which is a common divisor of A and B. It will actually suffice... Um, to show that C is less than or equal to D. Because if D is a common divisor of A and B, and C is a common divisor of A and B, and D is supposed to be the greatest one, then C has to be less than or equal to, because C could equal D. It's possible. Like in the last example, um, the 6 and 9, uh, 3 is the only um, divisor of those two. So yeah, uh, it suffices to show that C is less than or equal to D. So we know C divides A, and C divides B. Therefore, C divides any linear combination. Right? Uh, yeah, this is a fundamental truth. Um, I think we talked about this a couple episodes ago. But uh, yeah, but actually, I'm going to turn the page. AX plus BY. Keep that in mind because AX plus BY equals D. We just found that over here. So um, therefore, C divides D. So if C divides D, uh, therefore C has to be less than equal. I'm sorry, the absolute values of C have to be less than or equal to absolute values of D. But uh, oops, but D is a natural number, right, from the beginning. Uh, so therefore, absolute value of D equals D itself. So C is less than or equal to D. And by this, we could actually know that C is less than or equal to D, which is what we went, you know, uh, what we were trying to prove. So yes, uh, C is the f a factor of A and B is actually less than D. So D has to be the greatest common factor of A and B. Okay, I hope this all made sense. Um, this is the GCD characteriz characterization theorem, uh, quite a quite a mouthful. But um, yeah, if you do have any questions, feel free to leave in the comment section below. Um, uh, you know, like always, uh, like and subscribe are appreciated. And until next time, peace out.